coming up on the sports desk. If you can't get it all the way there and it has to bounce, that's fine. Summer spotlight on South High softball and baseball. Legendary Olympic swimmers take over the Torrance Aquatic Center while some former NFL pros hold a training day for the kids. From football to futsal. Now that Wimbledon is in the books, more tennis please, hence a visit to the North High Courts. Co-ed at Youth Dodgeball, yes please, and age doesn't mean a thing on this golf course. We've got the who, what, where, when, and how. Let's get things started right now. Hey guys, welcome to the Sports Desk, your one source for all things tour and sports. I am your host, Leslie Robbins. For the next half hour or so, sit back and kick back as we give you a gateway to the brightest sports stars and hottest sports spots in Torrance. Before we get to the good stuff, we want to hear from you. Here are the social media stats. I'm at Leslie Mia. The show is at the Sports Desk TV. Find us, tag us, follow me. Our program is also on Facebook. We've got email. All the details are right there on the screen. Tell us what's going on and what we need to know because when it comes down to it, this show is all about you. Now let's get you in the know with some numbers. How about 10 and 0? Undefeated. That was South High Softball's record last season in league and overall the squad went 24 and 7. This is also the team that earned a spot in the CIF Southern Section Division 2 Championship game where they left the runner up. So, let their new season begin. We're going to get to a good athletic position. Drop step hard with this back. Turn this hip. Okay? So I'm running straight back like this and looking. Make the catch. If you can't get it all the way there and it has to bounce, that's fine. That's right. Good. Maybe the most important thing to make somebody a good outfielder is her first step. Today was the second week of our summer session, and that's primarily for incoming freshmen and players who were full-time JV last year. Uh, for the incoming freshmen, it's to give them an idea of what the program is like at South, what kind of drills we do, what our expectations are in terms of uh, work ethic and that kind of thing, and the JV players are out here to help them with that, to show them. And then we spend our week doing a different thing every day. Today we worked on outfield, tomorrow we'll probably work on infield and maybe some situations. Wednesday we'll probably hit, and then Thursday we find a way to play a game. And we follow that same pattern for about four weeks. Again, just to give them an idea of what it's like here so that when we start up in the fall, they're comfortable, they have a good feeling what softball is going to be, and we can hit the ground running. Last year was a terrific season. We had the whole team from the year before who was a year more mature, and I knew at the beginning that they had a chance to have a special season, which does not mean winning the CIF championship, but it means giving yourselves an opportunity to get there, which is what they did. After about the first eight, nine games, they kind of figured out who they were and, and really came together as a team and didn't lose very much after that. We had some terrific players, Sofia Fernandez, who was the Daily Breeze Player of the Year, all CIF, just had an amazing year pitching and we get all of them back. Didn't lose player, get that whole starting lineup back next year, so we're excited. Straight back. Get some air under your ball. And catch that at a higher point. Catch it up here instead of this way. I think we just need to work together more and just like pick each other up, because in the last game we got down, like we were down by a few runs and it was hard to come back for everyone and people were getting down on themselves and it was hard to like build their self-esteem back up. In high school, it's gonna be a lot tougher than it was in like rec ball, because it's gonna be more um, strict and there's only a limited of spots to be on the team so you have to work for your spot. Today I think I did pretty good. I think I could have been a little better in the outfield but overall I did pretty good. I've known half of them from like rec ball so I know most of the players here and then the two coaches I've had them as coaches at rec ball. Everything will be pretty much the same in terms of, you know, it's a pretty simple game. You play good defense and the pitching is good and you don't make a lot of mental mistakes and you find a way to score some runs and you always got a chance. So we keep it pretty basic. Don't try and make it too difficult. There's nothing really to reinvent. Like I said, I got that whole team coming back this year. They know how to win. Pretty much, there won't be a lot for me to do. My job this year is pretty much going to be to stay out of their way and let them play. They, they know what they need to do. Team on three. One, two, three. Team! team. The Spartans baseball team has not slowed down either as they look to up their stats from last season. 8-2 in league and 19-8 and overall. Justin Thompson has the story. 
Thanks, Leslie. I'm here at South High School to check in on the Spartans baseball team and see how the summer's been treating them. Right now, they're just moments away from taking on Culver City High School. And South wasted no time showing us why they were undefeated in Summer League with some impressive defensive plays and back-to-back -back home runs from seniors Colin Wong and Dawson Hoka. I saw the pitch before he threw me backdoor curveball and I was sitting on it again because I heard their coach. He said, oh, do it again. So I looked for it and he hung it and I just hammered it. I got a really good count to hit in, a 2-0 count. You know, obviously fastball's coming. So I was just trying to see the pitch big, see it early and uh, just try to find the barrel. I've been struggling at the plate for a little bit um, this summer. So I'm just, uh, just trying to put good barrel on the ball, hit the ball hard. And this one went out today. But even with those early fireworks, South would fall just short, taking their first loss of the summer league. I mean, I think you, you got to give a lot of credit to, to Culver City. They came out swinging the bats. I mean, they were completely ready. Um, you know, they had a great aggressive approach at the plate. Um, unfortunately, we made some errors that kind of cost us a couple runs. And because of that, they capitalized and they ended up being the victors, really. I mean, I think it was a well fought game. Uh, finish, you know, finish at eight, eight to five. I would say probably four of those runs were at least, at least four were scored on errors. So we were really right in those in that game. If we take away those errors, we were, we were good. South has used their strong summer league performance as motivation for the upcoming season. Now we got bright future. We got a lot of young guys uh, coming up that are good, and our pitching staff should be phenomenal this year, and it's exciting for our future. You know, it's funny. Um, I actually transferred to South my junior year, so I came from Redondo. So these guys, they, they really accepted me, brought me into their family. And, you know, for me to be able to, to lead this team and lead these lead a young group of boys, it's, it's something amazing. And, you know, the way that they've welcomed me is how I would want to treat them. It's not all about baseball for us at Spartan Baseball. It's, it's about building get great young men, and that's, what, that's our focus. Especially summer baseball, it's a little bit more casual than season. But, you know, our approach is very similar with our guys, and they know that, that, that we're there to support them uh, through, the, through the thick and thin, the good, bad, and the ugly. So that, that's what we do. Heading across town to North High, where the Saxons recently held tennis tryouts. And so while we're in that time between Wimbledon and the U.S. Open, let this be your tennis fix. Wow. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, one more. One more, one more. Today is the first day of tryout, so we're expecting uh, more each day as the days go on. We're just trying to kind of get a judge of where, where kids should be and what skill levels they're at and then um, some skill that we need to work on so that we can compete in league this year. The summer program's been going pretty well. The kids have been working hard, and there's been a difference already um, in improvement of skill so far. We're getting a new coach, so because the new coach doesn't know the returners, it's important for them to try out so he can judge what uh, level and what if they should be playing singles or doubles. So far the tennis summer program has been going amazing and we've been doing a lot of stretches and workouts and new drills and thanks to our new coach we've been very much improving. A lot of the underclassmen on JV and on VAR have been improving a lot and I find our team going really good this season. Last year we were second place against South High. South High was first and we had a lot of seniors with us and we did amazing <laughs> and I really think that this year with our new coach we can possibly beat them because we're improving a lot. I want to bring more consistency and I want pretty much our team to get closer because I've noticed that um, JV and VAR are kind of drifting a little apart. We're kind of like our own little sections, but I want us to be more closer and I want all of our friendship to be great. I'm really excited for senior year. It's going to go good. Tennis summer program is being great, uh, going great. I feel like making more progress than last year. Last year's game, I feel like we could have done better and we could have focused more on our skills and our strategies. I feel like this year we could get uh, gained more progress and experience and winning more games. The summer tryouts, we're doing stretching right now, and for the summer program, we did really good because our new coach and everything. Okay, last year, I played doubles, so my partner, and we did really good. We made it to like semifinals in league, so that was really good. Last year, I learned that I wasn't very consistent with my shots, so that's what I'm working on this year. Since I'm gonna be singles, I have to be more consistent and like under control. So that's what I've been working on this summer. The team did pretty well last year. They went to CIF, so we're looking to be just as competitive, if not more, uh, this year in league. 
Okay, coming up, Olympic swimmers take over the Torrance Aquatic Center, plus some former NFL pros prep our youth from football to futsal. The young play dodgeball, plus Torrance is young at heart. Hit the links. Stay tuned. Where are you headed? Uh, I'm just gonna hang out. If any of your buddies ever pressure you to take a drink, just tell them you promised your dad you wouldn't. I promise. Love you too, Dad. They really do hear you. For tips on what to say, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. Welcome back to the Sports Desk. Leslie Robbins here. The Torrance Aquatic Center was recently blessed with not one, not two, but three decorated Olympians from the Fitter and Faster organization, teaching kids how to be well, fitter and faster. Check it out. How many strokes in one cycle? Two strokes in one cycle. You should get to the surface and hold for three seconds before you break your string line. So if you're swimming in, it's your responsibility to show me what you're thinking. The best uh, races I ever had was where I got my, my body and my mind ready to perform. I didn't just sit around and hope for the best. We're running a fitter and faster yeah. swim clinic. This is open to any competitive athlete and a swimmer who wants to get better and improve. We're here with a couple of Olympic legends, Michael Klim from Australia and Gary Hall Jr. from the US, who are both swim stars from 1996 Olympics, 2000 and 2004. Fitter and Faster is a uh, swim clinic business. We run clinics for competitive athletes all around the country. We run up to 300 clinics per year. We're really just giving the skills and techniques that they've learned over many years both uh, physically and mentally and trying to help these young kids improve their techniques and their and their training and ultimately their racing in the pool. In two sessions per day we're running 11 and under in the morning for a couple of hours and then we do a 12 and over uh, in the afternoon and we have swimmers of, of all ages in the afternoon coming. It's really learning from Olympic athletes and competitive at, you know, at the highest level. So these, these swimmers are taking technique tips away, they're taking tips on uh, how to eat better and recovery, nutrition, dry land techniques on how to get stronger so that they can apply that to the pool. But generally just really learning the, the ins and outs of technical swimming. We break down each race uh, and the components of the race. So we've been working primarily on freestyle which is Gary Hall Jr.'s specialty, and then Butterfly, which was uh, Michael Klim's specialty. We're breaking down components of the race, whether it be streamlining or starts from the blocks or, or turns, very, very specific parts of the race that enable these kids to improve their times. To the untrained eye, swimming from here to there is just about uh, pushing off the wall and moving your arms and legs. Okay, to the, to the trained eye, there are small little details within that length that is going to help you from get to uh, point A to point B faster. I'm a two-time Olympic swimmer myself. I swam in Sydney 2000 and 2004. I'm also an Olympic coach. I've coached at three Olympics. Right now, I coach the fastest swimmer in the world from Brazil. His name is Bruno Fratis. He's competing at the World Championships in a couple of weeks. I'm a three-time Olympian. I attended 96, 2000 in Sydney and 2004 in Athens. Um, six, uh, a six-time Olympic medalist and a world record holder in both 100 freestyle and 100 butterfly. It's great to see athletes that attend these sort of clinics because it shows that they really want to improve. They get a, a point of view from uh, athletes that have been there at that highest level, they've achieved certain standards and and I think it's very much just reinforcing the fundamentals of swimming fast. I get a great sense of pleasure of seeing young swimmers being passionate about the sport. I've swam my entire life and to be able to pass on that knowledge that I've acquired, it uh, it's gives me a sense of accomplishment as well. There's a whole range of ability out there, you know, anybody that's interested in improving they really uh, come out and attend these things. And it's also an opportunity for us swimmers too to give back that have kind of benefited from the sport through the years in various ways. And you don't need to win an Olympic gold medal to benefit from the sport. Really a lot of kids are involved for our social aspects, for team building, and all the great things that come from commitment, dedication, hard work, goal attainment, that type of stuff. 
and uh, be able to inspire them and encourage them to uh, you know pursue their own dreams that's really important for us it's kind of surreal in a way because like you see them as like up there like really hype and you think like you'll never get to that level but then they come here and they talk and you're just like oh my god like they're here you're talking to me you're coaching me it's just such a cool experience my goal is to make it to the olympics like not even just to win a medal just to make it there and can say like i made it learning from these guys it's such a great experience learning a lot of new stuff for technique and also just for racing in general for my goals uh, being a swimmer i would like to swim in college and uh, hopefully beat my times and uh, pursue and new futures becoming a professional swimmer. It's very overwhelming and then when I looked them up online it was really cool because I saw actually how fast they were and how current their how current their times were and how they were faster than, mo than most people right now. My personal goals are to hopefully make the Olympics swim in college and just achieve my full potential. It's really cool and nice. And I love practicing with these great swimmers. It's really fun, but also nerve-wracking because I don't really want to do anything wrong in front of them. Fitter and faster is pretty much what you have to be if you want to be an Olympic champion. Break out, two cycles fast, easy to the wall. Ready? Go. To the football field we go as some former NFL pros held a one-day clinic for the kids. It went down at Torrance High but was open to players entering grade 6 through 12 with a love for the game. There you go. I, I like that. I like that. Set. Go. If he's off, you got to curl. If he's fresh, you got to nut. Man, let's roll. With me being a homegrown coach, being raised in Torrance and playing Torrance sports myself, both Pop Warner and then at North High, I just felt I would give back, give back to the kids, give back to the community, all this knowledge that I acquired along the way. These kids inspired me by letting me know that there still are youth out there that are interested in playing football. Numbers are really dropping as for football, both at the youth level and at the high school level. So these kids showed me that there still is an interest in the sport and, and that, that we are doing something worthy for the community. You're building a, a relationship with these kids, so it's, it's just trust. Like in any other relationship, trust is the number one factor. They have to trust that you are showing them skills and techniques, that, as well as you have to trust that kid that he is going to be coachable, be teachable, as well as show up on time and believe in you as a coach. Everyone that came out today was able to learn and able to just add value to their football game. Everybody came with, with, with the passion to teach. I was fortunate enough to get six years in, in the NFL and uh, you know this injuries happen and you know it, it's a tough road all together so that's kind of what we want to do is kind of put these kids on the right track and kind of give them some game that they might not get from you know just going to their regular school or going to their, their regular Pop Warner. We want to go ahead and give them some extra direction and, and kind of put them on the right path. I think it's important because I think that these days there's camps from colleges, there's camps from you know corporations like Nike and stuff like that and in those camps you know some kids tend to get lost in the shuffle, some kids tend to not get the one-on-one -on -one direction that we can kind of offer by pulling them aside and having the camp still being run and coaches still kind of instructing. But we're able to get some one-on-one -on -one time with them and really hone in on what they need help with personally and specifically. So for that matter it's a lot better for us to kind of get just a little more you know, just get it, putting a little bit, a little extra cherry on top on teaching them the proper way to do things, proper tackling and proper technique and stuff like that, just to make sure that they're safe and, and playing the game the right way. When we see those kids and, and they come and they're self-motivated and self-inspired, it kind of inspires us to, to, you know, help them because they want the help. And, you know, as far as just the game, we love this game. You know, this, this game has been our whole life thus far. So in order to give back and in order to, you know, help fulfill that, need and want that we still have for the game, you know, this is kind of a channel for us to do so. We're able to get in, get with the game at its purest level, you know, with its purest athletes, the kids, and, and really teach them just how to do it right. To come out here and give back to the kids and, and just to give them our, the knowledge we have gained over the years of playing football, you know, I have been playing football since I was six years old, so, and on up to uh, the NFL level, the highest level of football, so I've learned a lot from them. 
a lot of different coaches and teammates and players and everything, man. So just coming back and giving the kids that type of knowledge. And professionally, man, it was a great experience, man. Getting drafted to the Houston Texans back in 2009 was a dream come true. I actually played with uh, Miami Dolphins and Chicago Bears as well. So that right there was just huge, man, being able to play on that big stage in the highest level of football, man. It was just an honor to just do that and have my family see me play. Tell them my experience and just giving them the truth about football and just being about life, man. I'm teaching out here trying to teach these guys how to be men as well, how to be young men as well, you know, not just teach them how to play football or how to just how to navigate and live life and, and just do the right things, you know, how to avoid negativity and avoid the negative situations. So just giving them my experience and when I do that, man, it just, it's rewarding for me to uh, see the kids Rest to that. My NFL professional career, it was amazing going to Arizona State because that's a professional deal too in college. After leaving the collegiate level, going to the Chargers, been picked up in 2011 by the San Diego Chargers. Then after my career there, I went to the Baltimore Ravens for one year. After staying one year with the Baltimore Ravens, went to Canada, played a year out there, came back home to the States and played arena ball for a couple years and joined the the community aspect of things and giving back to the community, teaching character and acts of kindness and taking that that mental aspect to another level. They inspire me because they just keep me going because I have something else to help build so they can achieve a goal and this will help them because they can take this information and level up to, to make it to their dreams and achieve what they want to accomplish. I met a lot of the players I went to college and played in the NFL and it was very cool to meet them. It was pretty cool how they went to the like further step in their life and how they came back and just like gave back to us to help us and improve. I, I learned a lot. I'm really thankful for all the coaches coming out and uh, taking the time out of their weekend to come give us some pointers, help us out. I was pretty excited to take pointers from you know people who made it all the way. I'm gonna make sure to take account in like all the pointers that helped me everything they they pointed out with uh, that was wrong with my game I'll make sure to take that into account and fix it what's great about sports is they teach you a lot of life skills confidence discipline sacrifice teamwork you know and those are skills that you can carry on throughout your life you gotta win in your grade you gotta win at work you gotta win on the field you gotta win and anything you do fellas you have to win so I want to allow win so on the count of three, we want to say win. Bring it up high. Bring it up high. Come on, fellas. On the count of three. One, two, three. Win! There we go. Yeah. Sports for everybody and every age. Recently, we joined in on the Sierra Golf Course's Senior Citizens Club, and a good time was had by all. Melanie Chacon tells the story. <laughs> Behave. <laughs> I can't help the Sea Air Golf Course is a nine-hole, three-par, pitch-and-putt course located in the seaside neighborhood of South Torrance. And if you're a senior citizen looking to keep up your handicap, this may be the perfect course and club for you. This is a nice course and, uh, you know, it's, it's not overcrowded and uh, we got a lot of openings for members. Twenty years I've played here. My mother-in-law and father-in-law taught us how to play golf when I retired, my wife and I. So she plays here on Thursday. So it's good. I was always in athletic. I used to be on the basketball, basketball team. I used to be in a volleyball team in high school. So I'm very athletic, I like, uh, you know, to, to be athletic. I'm blessed that I'm able to, to still play. Members of the Seniors Club meet here and play every Friday morning, and they also have the opportunity to participate in tournaments. It's a fun group of people we have here. Um, we have uh, tournaments once a month, uh, various tournaments. I'm tournament director, and come out and join us. It's a lot of fun. It's a beautiful place to come play. Um, it's a, this kind of this golf course. I think is is like a gem in Torrance. It's very beautiful. And the people that come out, you know, they have a lot of fun. They have tournaments. Um, it's a fun group. With a few small hills to climb and the longest hole being 85 yards, this course allows players to move around and have lots of fun along the way. Come on out. It's a lot of fun. We've got a lot of old people here. I'm 83 and uh, we, we had somebody just quit, 94. It's a great time to get together and just hang out with new friends that you meet. 
You don't have to be good. I can swear by that. Come on down. We got plenty of room for extra people. It's probably the best exercise I get all week. Now, if golf isn't your thing, maybe dodgeball is, courtesy of the Torrance Community Services Department. Melanie is on the story. Thanks, Leslie. The Summer Youth Co-Ed Dodgeball Program is underway, and we're here at the D. Hardison Sports Center, where the second game of the day is about to get started. The Youth Sports Dodgeball Program, it takes place for eight weeks in the summer at D. Hardison Sports Center in Wilson Park. It is a co-ed program. For the last few years, I've been in charge of it. I try to make it fun for the kids. My philosophy is if it's boring for me, then it must be boring for them. So I try to incorporate different drills, uh, different learning opportunities, uh, different styles of playing. They're a great group of kids. You can tell they all come from different backgrounds. As a staff member that keeps returning to the program and working it, I do thoroughly enjoy it and I'm happy to be here to be here for the kids and teach them and show them how to have some fun on a Saturday. It's fun. We usually switch up teams, get to know each other a little bit. I think you guys should like try it a lot and all the kids out there should like get start practicing. In case, in case they parents enroll them. What makes dodgeball really fun is that, um, you know, just what people you're working with and the strategies you come up with and overall just the people you work with. It's amazing because they give me like so much support and especially my brother, he like encourages me a lot and it makes me feel more comfortable to be here with my cousin here. So it's always nice. I found out about it through my wife and through Cameron and they were researching to play dodgeball. He always wanted to play. And I knew they had adult leagues, but I didn't know if they had leagues for kids. I'm surprised just how competitive it is. And he enjoys it, and if he enjoys it, we enjoy it. It's serious, it's competitive, and it's really fun. It's dodgeball. No reporter was hurt during that filming. Okay, it's futsal time, and if you don't know what futsal is, Justin Thompson is here to help. Futsal. It's a sport often compared to soccer, but make no mistake, futsal is very unique. One big difference is there is no offsides in futsal, a sport that features a 5 on 5 battle with teams facing off indoors for two 20 minute periods. Futsal uses a smaller ball and allows unlimited substitutions, which is very helpful except when you only have five players on your team. Usually we have some subs, but both teams didn't have any subs today. So it's a, it's a good workout when there's only five of you out there and you, you, know, you don't get that break. Because of the shorter playing field and the speed of the game, each team is allowed one timeout per period. The quick pace forces futsal players to be precise with their passes and make decisions very quickly. You gotta pass the ball a lot because it's a very, very tight uh, court. So you get players coming at you like very fast. So you, you just gotta get rid of the ball as quick as, quick as you can. Futsal has been growing in popularity and made its debut as an Olympic sport at the 2018 Summer Youth Olympics, where the Brazil boys and the Portugal girls took home the gold. The LA Galaxy Soccer Center here in Torrance offers a summer futsal league that runs through September 13th. It's more like a community, you know? Like everybody here kind of knows each other, like all the players know the refs and all the refs like know the players. Like they, they always say hi, they're only really friendly and everybody just kind of cool here, you know? It's never too aggression, like we go play other places and it gets kind of aggressive out of hand, but over here everybody knows, you know, it's like a family place because the kids who come earlier and all, we try to keep it a uh, very family, you know. So if you want to play some futsal, make your way down to the Galaxy Center any Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday night. Games start at 8 o'clock. Come on down. They'll put you on a team. You don't even have to have a team. We'll put you on a team and just enjoy yourself. Have fun. From the Galaxy Soccer Center back to the Torrance Aquatic Center, head coach of North High Water Polo and Swimming, Coach Sam, posted this on Instagram, writing, boys working hard. Well, in two weeks, we're poolside with the Saxons to show you that hard work firsthand. And on that note, we'll see you back here in 14 days. Really looking forward to seeing you then. Be sure to stay in touch on social media, Twitter, Instagram. I'm at Leslie Mia. The show is at the Sports Desk TV. Tag us, find us on Facebook, send us an email, keep in touch, and take us behind your scenes. For everyone here at the Sports Desk, I'm Leslie Robbins. Thanks for watching.